Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about gas flows. Here are a few important things to know about gases first. Gases expand to fill their containers. This means that the volume of the container equals the volume of the gas. The gas molecules have a lot of space between each other, right here. That means they're easily compressible. Temperature is always in Kelvin. This is 273 degrees Kelvin added to the degrees Celsius, and that gives us absolute temperature. Standard pressure at sea level is one atmosphere, 760 millimeters mercury, or TOR, and 101.325 kilopascals. The number of moles is expressed by the lowercase variable n. Boyle's law, the first law. It is a pressure and volume relationship. It states, at a constant temperature, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. And this, this means as uh, P goes up, V goes down. It's expressed by this simple little uh, equation right here. V equals K over P, where K is a constant based on temperature and the amount of the gas. Uh, this is the relationship drawn on a simple little graph. As pressure increases, volume decreases. A perfect example of this is the rib cage. As, a diagram, as the diaphragm increases the volume of the lungs, Pressure decreases and the surrounding air rushes in. This gives us breathing. Charles' law, the next law. Temperature and volume relationship. It states that at a constant temperature, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. This means as T goes up, V goes down. It's expressed by this simple equation, V equals KT. K is a constant dependent on pressure and the amount of gas. Here it is drawn on, on a simple graph. As T goes up, V goes up. Avogadro's law, the quantity and volume relationship. It states that at a constant temperature and pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles. It's expressed by V equals Kn, the lowercase n variable being moles. K is a constant dependent on temperature and pressure. Here it's represented on a graph. As V goes up, N goes up. As N goes up, V goes up. And from all these laws, we have the ideal gas equation. It is a com by combining all the relationships, we get V is directly proportional to NT over P, stated as volume is proportional to moles times temperature divided by pressure, the symbol being proportional. Remember, the proportion, or remember the proportions constant uh, we used earlier as K. It was dependent on different variables, and in the ideal gas equation, it's renamed as R. So V equals R NT over P. Rearranging it, we get PV equals NRT, affectionately known as PVNERT. Now, for R, our simple uh, constant, we have a number of given values. These are solely memorization. Uh, here we have units, uh, liter atmospheres per mole kelvin, joules per mole kelvin, liter torr per mole kelvin, mole kelvin, and the numerical values that coincide with them. 0 0.0821, 8.314, 62.36. All for memorization. Now, applying and using these gas laws is the important part of this. They're used to determine the molar volume of an ideal gas. So here we have a simple little uh, uh, scenario. Suppose we have 1.0 moles of an ideal gas at 1.0 atmospheres and 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius. And according to PV and all equals NRT, we can rearrange for volume and plug in our little values and everything, we use 0 0.0821 for R, those are the uh, liter atmospheres, and we get 22.4. This is the space occupied by an ideal gas at STP, and this condition, the conditions of 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius and 1.00 atm are called standard temperature and pressure, STP. They're also used, going back to applying and using the gas laws, used for problems with multiple variables. We can rearrange the variables to solve for unknowns such as moles, pressure, volume, temperature. And that's that.